All right, so our next presenter, I'm sure you have no idea who he is or know nothing about him. Um, but it is Artist Kadu. He is our wonderful uh, CEO. Just a little bit about Artist. I know he doesn't need an introduction, but we're going to give him one because um, he absolutely deserves it. So um, Artist, after graduating in NYU with a master's in digital media and an MBA, total overachiever, um, <laughs> uh, he helped found Spark 451, which I have some representatives of Spark here today. Um, as the company's chief technology officer, he then designed what we all know now is Element 451 uh, as a student engagement CRM, and in, has been steadily growing that ever since then um, to what it is today, um, which is come to be such an amazing thing, and kind of what he'll show you today is what's coming with that. So um, without further ado, uh, please give it up for our fierce, our mighty leader, Artis. All right, everybody. Um, so you've heard me kind of jump in and out a little bit during the presentation, but this is really exciting for me. This is really kind of taking what we've been doing and giving you a peek at what's coming and some of the exciting things that we have going on for the product. Uh, for those of you who use the product right now or use Element right now, you get some, uh, you're going to get to see some interesting things in here. And for those of you who, uh, who are not using Element yet, you probably get to see a, a peek at how we think about our product philosophy and how we think about uh, how do we connect and how we become relevant. I, I like that word a lot, relevant to um, you know, actually what you need in your campuses and kind of in your daily work that you're doing. So I did. Um, I did borrow this, this slide from, from Wanda because it was so good, right? So marketing past and present and future is about people, right? So that whole idea about being people, about people and marketing being about people, this is something that we, you know, because Element's DNA is in marketing and we needed to accomplish and do better connections with, with students, um, our, our DNA as a company and our DNA as a product is actually in marketing. So a lot of the things that you are hearing today about engagement, relevance, cohorts, uh, you know, everything that you're hearing, it ties back to marketing and kind of how we're trying to connect with them because our DNA is in marketing. So this is very relevant to kind of what we're talking about and kind of how we think about the product. And it's really relevant because the, you know, those, those folks who are we're trying to reach and that we're engaging with our students, they're, changed they have changed you know our products necessarily or the way we're delivering education has not changed in a while uh, however you know who's on the other side of that that learner has changed right and they're they're digital savvy they expect convenient fast and personal experiences and that's really one of the things that we've been trying to uh, to kind of provide as, as part of the element as part of the product um, when we think about that now you know we, we've been delivering a great product but now uh, we want to take that experience past enrollment, past admissions. And, and last year we announced that we are, Element is going to be available and we're going to kind of fit the product to become much more than just an admissions and enrollment CRM and uh, an engagement platform, but become more of a student, um, full student journey uh, CRM. Uh, and that's, that's kind of what we're, we're talking about. How do we personalize that student-centered journey from admissions to graduation? So it's all about the student, right? And we're all thinking about that student being very, um, you know, at the center of everything that we do. So Wanda said, think about, you know, the consumer. Think about, you know, what's on the other side. And if you do that, then the marketing becomes relevant, the connection becomes uh, more personalized, and it becomes much more genuine um, rather than being forced. So we put together a short video uh, to kind of reframe some of the things that we've been talking and kind of how we're thinking about elements. So rather than me kind of describing what element is and how we're thinking about it, so we put together a short video uh, so you guys can take a look at it. Obviously these aren't as great as the, and they're not going to go viral as, as some of the other, some of the other ads that you saw, but you know, you know, we're, we're kind of uh, showing it here first. Every college wants more students. We tried all the typical marketing strategies 
But then we realized students are... Juggling group projects, essays, online and in-person classes, plus friends, parents, clubs, and general anxiety about the future. We needed a better way to engage. And we did it with Element 451. It was like discovering a whole new world of recruiting. A world where student engagement and enrollment happen on the same platform. A world where it's easy to recruit students, nurture interest with personalized communications, and provide a seamless application and enrollment experience. Everything we need in one platform. There's no more hassling with and paying for multiple systems. Element 451 lets us dive into usable data and intuitive tools to track and adjust engagement efforts. So your emails won't look like this? No. Gross. Element 451 lets you easily customize all your communications while looking great on mobile devices. It even helps us review applications and send online acceptance packages in a fraction of the time, then nudges the accepted students to take the next steps. We graduated from clunky spreadsheets and a worn-out CRM. Now we're using data to personalize our outreach, working smarter, not harder. Discover what it's like to leave outdated, expensive tech behind and find out for yourself how schools are boosting enrollment through better student engagement. Try a demo today at element451.com. Element 451, take education higher. All right, so a lot of that, we've, we've been having this video in production for quite a while, and some of those things in there actually tie really nicely with what Zach was saying about the student being on the other side and saying, you know what, your, your emails look like they're from the 90s, I'm not gonna, you know, or your website looks like from the 90s. So um, a lot of those pieces that you saw in here around how do you take data, how do you kind of, you know, try to match that with what's working, what's not working, and how do you make those better engagements, that's, that's kind of the things that we're, we're kind of moving forward with. Now when we think about our product development, um, there's, there's three, uh, fundamental elements that uh, we talk about and this is kind of get weaved into a lot of our, our products a lot of our modules and how we think about and how we build our products as well and and essentially the the questions that we ask during those that development um, the first thing is, is productivity so how do we make you more productive how do we how do we eliminate friction how do we make things um, easier to get to how do we remove decisions from you, right? So you don't have to make those decisions. How do we make things quicker uh, to get to, to those decisions? Uh, personal, you know, when we talk about, so I'll move productivity, we'll move to personalization. So when we talk about personalization, we talked on how, um, you know, you're, you're kind of delivering a lot of different messaging. Uh, how do we connect, connect uh, the, the interface to be more contextual to what you're doing. So, so you don't, ha again, going back to you not having to make a lot of decisions. How do we change the interface? How do we make things simpler? How do we make um, things more contextual to kind of what you're doing? Uh, the third one is intelligence. This is a really big one because you can have all of the delivery mechanisms in the world, right? You can have all the channels, you can have all the creative, but if you're not understanding what's working, what's not working, how to bring that in, how to digest that, and, and kind of make decisions based on it, then it is really difficult to kind of move. So, so that's kind of why we talk a lot about intelligence, not necessarily just by throwing a lot of data at you, but the way that we use intelligence to, again, remove um, the decisions that you have to make and, and make it a companion rather than, uh, I think the word was used, data-driven, uh, uh, data um, was it data informed and not data driven necessarily? So data informed is, is kind of the ability to kind of talk about those and, and, and have it be another uh, component rather than you know looking at his black and white. And then the, the last one is about connectivity. So you know we live in a world where you know there's a million products being produced every single day. You know there is there is a great app for this. There is good kind. There's co video. There's there's all of these different um, apps that we need to use. Element is not going to be everything for everybody, and we're not going to, um, to have all of these different you know, features. However, the larger ecosystem of SaaS and, and kind of software is, is kind of expanding. So us having the ability to connect to anything becomes really, really important. So having data exchange that moves back and forth and connecting to things and integrating with things makes it much easier for you to say, hey, I'm picking a platform that I know it's going to be part um, of our ecosystem. It's going to play nice with everybody else. We're, we're very open, and that's kind of the philosophy that we take about it, right? So with all of those things, we're, you know, we're talking about moving through and, and talking about element being the layer that is 
powering all of the student engagement, all the way from top of the funnel for your enrollment to uh, current students and even to, to graduation and post. And the way that we think about it is that it's, you know, we think about it as a learner life cycle and a, uh, a, a, the lifetime value or the lifetime of that student is not just you know, those couple of years or maybe a few courses that they're taking with you. We're talking about the, the really long life cycle of the student uh, that they're going to be with you uh, and then be, by you being a relevant brand for them, by you being relevant for them, then they're coming back over and over again. So this marketing and this loop is going to continue and you're going to see that more and more happening. And that's some of the messaging that's going on today, right? It's all about, you know, how tight are you to a brand? Uh, all of us here kind of manage a brand, so to speak. We're all in the recruiting admissions. Uh, we're all in the, in the marketing space. So with that being said, you know, we, we did go and, and said, okay, if we're going to do this, we need to rethink uh, how, uh, we need to take a step back and build a platform, a, a design system that is going to help us get from where we are today in the next you know, two, three, five, ten years and then build something that, that kind of fits into a lot of those product pillars. Um, and we're, we kind of started that. So rather than me telling you more about it, I'm going to ask Ty. Uh, Ty is our, our um, uh, design leader and he's been working really, really hard with his team to essentially put together a lot of the uh, things that you're going to notice today from, from a design perspective. Uh, and he's going to tell you more about it and kind of what we're thinking, kind of where we are. Uh, but Ty, why don't you come up? Awesome, thank you. So yeah, as Artis said, if you want to have a really, um, thank you, ambitious vision for a product, and you want to create a lot of unique and powerful functionality, it's critical that you have an interface that can handle that. And so going into this, this really uh, amazing vision, starting on it, we realized that we needed a, a rethink of how the element interface worked. And we needed to establish some patterns that drew off of the lessons that we've learned from how the interface has been to date. And so Bolt UI is our solution to that. And Bolt UI is not just a series of page designs, it's actually what you call a design system. And if you've used a Google product, you've used their design system, which is called Material Design. And that's why whenever you pick up a Google, a Google product, whether it's on your phone or your computer or wherever else, it has a consistency and it has a familiar feel to it. And that's what we've been trying to achieve for you all with Bolt UI, is that when we roll out these uh, complex new features, you will feel at home immediately. You, it will be intuitive to you and you'll be able to be productive quickly. So I'm gonna start by just running through some of the core concepts of Bolt UI and how it works. This is the profile page. Element is obviously a CRM and the key screen in any CRM is a person. Right? It's, it's to look at an individual person who's in your system. And um, like with a lot of modern CRMs, we've designed the new version of the profile page uh, to try to consolidate all of the, the key information at the top, but also to create some kind of flexible zones like you see in the middle. And we've consolidated a lot of, a lot of functionality that used to maybe take an entire screen, and we've put those into these little cards, and I'll get more into detail on how those cards work in a second. So you can see that this screen contains a lot of very uh, dense and very, um, very important information that folks like yourselves would be looking for when you're looking at a screen like this. Another key paradigm in Bolt UI are these contextual sheets. And so what these do is that when you're looking at a, a screen like a profile page, instead of having to go to a totally separate page in order to look at more detail, you can open more detail quickly in an overlay that slides in from the right. And you can even click on some of the items in this list, and I'll get to the, the tasks functionality in a second, and you can open another sheet that comes in from the right, and you can quickly go back to this one. So it enables you to kind of zoom in on the data that you're looking at, and then quickly zoom out. Another key screen in any CRM are index pages. So these are screens that show uh, lots of different records at once, and this is our kind of new approach, uh, cleaner, simpler, um, more, more uh, you know, visually simple than, than before. Uh, and Bolt is not just for our key, our, our core screens, it's also, it creates paradigms that we're using for our most complex features as well. And this is the conversations 
uh, feature that has been rolling out and we'll hear more about in a second. Um, and also within CRMs, we know that it's not just the screens where you're looking at data that are important. It is when you're dealing with the nuts and bolts of configuring the application for your team. So one of the things we focused on really hard with Bolt are creating really beautiful and modern and intuitive setting screens so that when you're administering the application, you have a good experience. So those are the, the kind of core, core uh, patterns that we're using throughout Bolt UI, and I'm gonna jump into a little bit more of the specifics of, of how it works and some of the really unique things about that will make your lives uh, easier as users. And one of those things is editability. So when I was going through those screens, what I didn't tell you is that most of those screens also represent kind of the interface by which you would change your data. So instead of having to click an edit button and then have a separate interface where you would then update that data, we've made it so that you can just click into the different fields that you see, you can quickly make changes, and you can uh, hit the return key, you can hit the escape key, and your changes are saved, voila, you cut a couple clicks out of your day. And we know for you all that a couple clicks every five minutes really adds up. Um, so we hope we can, we can save you some time. So this is an example looking at a sidebar from that same uh, profile page. So you have the user's uh, fields here, and you'd be able to quickly just uh, click into the different fields and make edits in line. And the same goes for those tables. So you're not just able to look at a lot of information all at once, you're also able to edit that information uh, on the fly. So instead of having to click into a task, and then change the assignee, you could just change the assignee, for example. So these are some examples of um, kind of powerful workflows that we're facilitating using the new interface patterns in Bolt. Um, this is our uh, concept for what we're calling task mode, which I'll uh, talk about a little bit later in this se session. And this is a new notifications queue that we're building to consolidate all the notifications that you're already uh, receiving in Element uh, into a single interface. And you can see how we've kind of translated this, the same ideas and the same uh, aesthetic of Bolt UI into that context. Responsiveness is also super important for any modern product. Uh, we know especially with with the pandemic, with the rise of remote work, that people are working on the go, people are working from lots of different devices, wherever they are. And so, because Bolt UI is so uh, flexible and adaptable, it's made it really easy for us to optimize the experience for different screen sizes, whether you're on your huge uh, desktop screen or you're on your phone. And lastly, context, because we know that every school that uses Element has a different set of particular needs. And every team within each of those schools has their own set of needs. People who are working on different types of, uh, different roles within the enrollment life cycle or within the, the student life cycle as a whole are going to need different data. And so one of the key things about Bolt UI is that we've tried to make as much as possible configurable by the individual schools. And this is gonna be a really powerful um, functionality for you all to actually create your own different versions of these interfaces that will suit uh, either different types of record that you're looking at, for example, uh, differentiating between students who are looking for traditional enrollment versus non-traditional, or differentiating between teams in your school. So if you have a, a team, for example, that's focusing on residency verification, that you would be able to design a version of the profile page that those particular counselors would be seeing that makes their job uh, easier. And you can kind of drag and drop the different pieces of that profile page to make it suit that uh, workflow. Um, so that's all I'll say for now. Uh, I'll come up in a little bit and talk about another feature, but thank you, uh, and uh, yeah, we're really excited to walk through all this with you. Thanks, Ty. Thanks. All right. So, so one of the things that I wanted to now talk about is how we've actually, um, can everybody hear? Okay. Yeah. Okay how we've actually put that into, um, into play. So uh, we're gonna talk about, right now, we're gonna quickly talk about the people profiles. Ty touched base on those very quickly uh, around kind of in the context of Bolt UI, but this is a brand new feature that's coming to Element and it is really the idea of how do we take in what we have right now and make those profiles or those uh, core profiles 
be available and contextual and, and modifiable and, and all these different things because you know school, uh, your school or your um, workflow is going to be very different than somebody else's work than somebody else's workflow and when you look at a student or when you look at somebody in the CRM that might be a, a prospective student but you might need different data if that's a current student if that student is admitted or if that's an influencer or a family member so that's that's one of the things that we started with. We, we talked about the people profiles. There's 30 plus new card, 30 plus cards in there. A lot of those cards are new, and we'll touch base on some of them. Uh, customizable views, inline editing. Uh, we, ha we can have unlimited profile types. So well, this is one of the biggest things that we've been asked about: is how can we provide a different? How can we make the profile look different for everybody, for every team in our school, depending on who they are and depending on what kind of student they're looking at and that's the one thing that we've done and I'm really happy to say that this is available today and we're if you're if you have element um, this is something that you can go in and turn on and, and play around with it and one of the things that I'm going to do here is that I'm going to give you a quick preview of what that looks like so this is um, this is uh, uh, you know one of our profiles and if you have noticed in Element, this looks very different before, right? So this looked very different uh, from a different, um, you know, from our prior interface. Now this is a Bolt UI. This is a new profile. Um, one of the things that Ty was mentioning is that we can very, very quickly start editing, and the interfaces are, are very different in here. You can come down and you can take a look at some of the kind of items and cards, and um, I can start. I can start. Um, I can start modifying and editing things right in line. One of the things that we probably um, have talked a lot about is, OK, how do I blank something? Or how do I delete it right there in line? Uh, it's just one of those simple things, but sometimes it, it kind of goes unnoticed. So everything being in line in here. And everything in here is configurable. And I'll show you that in just a second. So if you notice, one of the nice card, one of the new cards that we've added in here is the, the idea of insights. It's like, how do you see? what that student is doing and all those interactions and how do you see their um, you know kind of are they a fan are they uh, what was their last touch point so how do you see what they're doing and, and we've kind of built a, a calendar um, engagement view so you can see all of their actions all put together so now you can take a look and see okay this is kind of how we've engaged with that student this is communications or, or actions that we've done and engaged with them and we want to also see how that student, like what kind of interactions and activities have they, uh, have they done in the system. So this is a great view to take a look at that. Of course, Ty talked about tasks and how that's kind of contextual in here as well. Um, and, and kind of the, this, this card format coming in. So everything that you're seeing in here, this is all Bolt. This is all uh, those cards. And it's, again, available today. So you can come in and you can kind of modify and play around with them. Um, we have the ability to, again, add it all, everything in this card-based layout. So a lot of the data is exposed as part of this. Um, we are not done yet. There is some more work to be done here. However, this is, again, available for you today. All you have to do, go ahead and enable Bolt profiles on, the, on the, your instance. And now when you go to uh, segmentation, it's actually, and you click on one of those segments, it's actually going to take you to a Bolt profile rather than uh, the old profile. Now, we would look at this and say, OK, well, how do I modify all of this, right? So there's a lot of components in here. But let's, um, you know, we, we've kind of moved, we've done a lot of work around that. And let me go. Let me go back here. And um, the, the other part that we're working on right now is to kind of complete the, the movement or the student journey or, or kind of modeling the ability for um, us to have different types of personas in Element is, is student journeys, right? So how, have, how can we you know, move beyond just the funnel and how can we model uh, students' interactions and how can we kind of put together a journey for them that we say, okay, they did this thing and they did this thing and they did this thing and then now we are kind of tying those together. So our answer to that is really journeys and, and journeys is a new feature um, that we're building that essentially lets you model 
um, kind of custom flows, right? No, you can't, you know, you can model more than just the enrollment funnel. Uh, you can model, you know, first year student um, student experience. You can model uh, their orientation experience. So you can have these custom journeys that, you know, give you the ability to kind of see how students are progressing and then kind of communicate and trigger actions through it. Um, it's that goal activity based and it's repeatable journeys. Now this feature will be available uh, a little bit later on over the next couple of months, but we have done all of the underlying work around journeys and we're going to be, uh, you're going to be really, really excited. So think about mm -hmm. custom um, milestones and custom funnels uh, rather than, you know, whatever we give you. Um, the other part that becomes really interesting as we become more and we kind of try to model other things in the CRM is the ability to have organizations, right? And organizations are, are, are another fundamental core component or core object in, in element. And we've done, we have um, introduced organization profiles. So this is a whole new contact type in element. It essentially can now seg you know, bring together, um, we can associate students and organizations together or any type of profile with an organization. So we can do things like full segmentation. We can say, give me all of the contacts, um, you know, give me all of the contacts who belong to this particular organization or give me all organizations who have contacts that have these types of attributes, right? Um, so it becomes really, really easy to, to kind of do those things. It's easy to import. We have uh, it kind of associates with a lot of, with the people. It, it kind of has both the student employee uh, relationship types and that's just the beginning, right? We're going to be building on this a lot more. Um, and again, that's available today. So that's an under beta. Uh, there's a couple more components to finish up, but it's actually right, it, well, it should be right underneath the, um, uh, right underneath the, the people section. And if it's not there, we'll probably be there by the end of the day today. All right, so um, I skipped briefly, I skipped very quickly over one of the more important things that Ty talked on. And rather than kind of going back in my slides, I wanted to highlight um, one more thing under profile. So we talked about context, uh, but one of the, the more important parts is, well, how do I change all of these views or this context? And, and that's where we've built profile templates, right? This was that uh, component that you didn't see before, uh, but essentially in here under profile templates, now I can create any type of template. Uh, we have a couple of default ones, but I can, I can build a student template and I can, uh, let me open this one. So I have, I, I have a student template in here and I can, uh, I can figure out what it looks like for Jamie, and you can see that it's in line, right? I can see it full screen. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like. I can close my full screen, but now if I want to make any edits to this, or essentially if I want to show this template based on the context, I already have the ability to, to kind of personalize it. In this case, this template is going to show when that student profile type is student, but I can add and I can add more components to it, more context to it. So I can add things like when their territory is X or when their address or country is Y or when the administrator, for example, or when, when folks who are logged in, they belong to a particular um, department, for example, right? So when they're admissions or when there's something else. So essentially, now you can build all of these different types then you can lock down those screens going forward. And of course, one of the cool things about this is that as I edit this, it becomes really easy to kind of see how I can now change the whole interface from the header to kind of how my background looks to um, you know, the ability to kind of add all these different metadata all to the top of the header to the ability to add different types of call to actions. And you can see how this is a system now for us evolving the product more and more and more beyond just the actual actions that we're doing right now. And as we move forward, we can see sidebars, again, similar thing in there uh, where we have the ability to kind of personalize. And of course, one of the other things is our main area here uh, where um, we can kind of disable groups and you can see, for example, all the different cards that we have available and we can start adding those cards uh, and of course make them, uh, you know, kind of lay them out however we want. And of course, so we can um, kind of change and drag and drop. So that wasn't just, you know, pictures and screenshots. This is actually available today. Uh, 
All right, so I'll go back to the presentation because this is, this is again, the team has worked really, really hard to kind of put this together, but I'm gonna go back to the presentation because we wanna talk about, we have a lot to cover, but I wanna talk about a couple more things. Um, we released our conversations, um, we released our conversations, uh, I would say a couple of months ago, and conversations has been one of the most used, the most adopted features. And it's all about communicating two-way communication in different channels, uh, SMS, email, uh, chat with uh, any of your students. The, the goal here was that it was speed, speed, speed. So we wanted to be both from an interaction perspective, easy to do the things that you need to do to get to that communication, to do that, um, you know, to get to, to that student, but also speed from an interface perspective, right? So things need to load really quickly, they need to be really, really fast. Um, we introduced with that the ability for now uh, to, to have embed anywhere messenger, right? So our messenger now can embed in, in your chat. It, it, this is not just a chat, right? It's just, it's a full messenger um, that we can embed on your website. It is one embed code and now we can deliver not just a track, we can deliver a tracking pixel, we can deliver the messenger which is contextual again, uh, you can kind of have that. And then it also handles things like anonymous conversations and icebreakers. So all of these things are available with our uh, new embeddable um, messenger which is part of conversations as well. Uh, if you haven't played around with this, please do, it's really cool and we're gonna be adding more and more new things to it. Um, the other things that we added were the ability for you to have Element be one central place where all of your work and communications are happening. Rather than you going to Gmail or having a, a sign, up, sign in to multiple inboxes, we said let's just bring all those messages to Element. So now you can forward all those messages to Element and you can have that inbox be the central place where you're responding to those students from those email addresses or from that phone number and then they can reply back to you so it's a two-way communication there. So we did that and, and um, we, we hope that this is kind of removes a lot of those general inboxes that you're kind of managing separately. Um, the, uh, some of the exciting things that we're going to talk about or you know that are upcoming uh, now what's just there is uh, the ability to have chatbot but we're the way that we think about chatbot is not the necessarily the frequently asked questions, right? Yes, that's important, and yes, we're, we're, we're kind of working on that, but because we have the context of the user, because we have all this data, it's more of a task bot, right? So how do I help that student accomplish something that they can't do in any other interface, or to make it easy and fast and, and more personal in this particular interface in the context that they're in? So that's, the, that's, that's coming, um, and we'll, you can, Students will be able to do things like application uh, statuses or be able to sign up for, for an event or fill in a form. And we've already done that. We started the form submission, kind of this inquiry uh, process already, but it's very simple right now, but we're adding a lot more to it. Uh, the next thing that we, we hear a lot is, okay, we want more channels, right? We want the ability to kind of talk to students. We're talking to a lot of international students right now. International recruiting is becoming uh, even more important. Um, and, and one of the things that they, that's happening over is WhatsApp. So we're, you know, we're, we're in the early stages of this, but this is something that we're, we've added and we want to deliver to you over the next uh, 12 months. Uh, on top of that, one of the other, one, another channels that's been really important is in-app calling, right? So of course, you know, uh, we're, we all prefer SMS and that's, or messaging that's a lot better however there is still something to be said about you know calling somebody and a lot of your um, kind of workflows rely on some of that calling right so having the ability to do that right within element becomes really easy uh, to kind of have that trackability to see all the interactions right so our our idea is that we want all of those interactions to be in element so then we can better um, lev leverage that data to give you more insights and to make uh, those interactions more personal because the more you know about that student the better you can personalize their communication. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is tasks and, and Ty is going to take a couple of minutes to talk about tasks because this was really a feature where you know we weren't sure how we wanted to to approach it uh, but it was it was something that's fundamental to every CRM and we went back and forth and, and did a lot of um, uh, we asked for a lot of your feedback, and, and Ty can, can talk about like how that fits in. Ty? Yes, um, thank you. I insisted on 
talking about tasks because I'm a productivity nerd. <laughs> and uh, I've seen the numbers on how some of you all use tasks, and I know you are too, so we're in, uh, we're in good company here. So this was a, a project that our, our design team really, really got into because we know how impactful this is for all of you every day working with an element. Um, and so the idea that we can make your lives a little easier is very, very motivating. And so we're going to show you the ideas that we've been working on for how we can uh, kind of transform this feature. And really the, the, the mission that, that artists gave our group is to bring Element on par with uh, all of the, the best task management software out there except that it's integrated with your CRM. It's integrated with your data and your tasks are right there. So you don't have to go back and forth between different systems to get that level of quality in the software. So this is the task index screen. And one of the big changes that we've made here is to allow you to group your tasks. So you can kind of construct a workflow that works for you personally or that works for your team. Uh, and then create, look, look at your tasks in different ways, looking on different dimensions. So for example, if you always do all of your phone calls uh, from 10 to 11 in the morning, you can have a group that just shows your phone calls and you can just go through those one by one. Uh, another thing that we've focused on is integrating tasks throughout the application. So we know that while you're doing tasks, you have to go somewhere else to do the task within Element. So we wanted to make it really easy for you to quickly pop into lists of tasks, get, find the relevant records, and pop back out while you're doing your work. We've added subtasks, which we know is a, a very um, common request, a very popular request, and something that can really help you uh, create the workflow that your team actually uses within Element. So for example, if you have a certain action that you always tend to do with a certain type of student, it might involve folks from a couple different departments who have a different role to play within getting that done. So subtasks allow you to do that while keeping sight of the overall big picture with that uh, student. Group assignment is something that we're also really excited about. So this allows you to take your existing um, groups and departments that are uh, specified within Element and actually bulk assign tasks to them. So you might have a group where um, it doesn't really matter who from that group does the task, just someone needs to do it, right? And this allows you to do that. You can assign a task to a group of people, it shows on all of their lists, and whoever checks it off uh, gets, gets the, the glory and, uh, you know, Pats on the back from their colleagues. And then queues. So queues are a, um, a, a new kind of invention to allow you to specify types of tasks that you always want to see together. So for example, this could uh, allow you to consolidate uh, tasks that have to do with residency, as in this example, um, tasks that are time sensitive, tasks that have to do with conferences, and you're able to create kind of a flexible set of filters so that any tasks that match those filters automatically end up in these queues. So these are really handy for if you have uh, certain you know, sub-teams or certain um, groups within your organization who always have to handle a certain type of work, they can see all of that work in one particular location. So you can have your Monday status meeting for your team, and you can immediately see everything that that particular team is responsible for. And task mode, as I mentioned before, I can talk a little bit more about. Um, the vision for task mode is that, as I said, while you're going about your work day, you're going to be uh, moving around all over the, the Element 451 interface, looking at different people doing different tasks. And uh, what we wanted to do is make it a little bit easier for you to kind of just go one by one through your task list. So this allows you to kind of pin your task list to the sidebar of Element and to uh, have this little strip across the top that's almost like a playlist. It kind of looks like a Spotify playlist or something where you're just going one by one through these different tasks. So this should make it easier for you to kind of keep track of what you're doing um, within the day. And what's really great uh, here as well is that as you're going through that list, if your job is to review 50 applications, as I know some of your jobs are, um, when you get to that task to review that one application, we're going to try to make it so that you immediately are brought to that application. So you don't have to look at the name, look it up, find that application and go there. But instead, when you go to that task, Element will recognize that you probably want to go to this application because that's what the task is for and immediately bring you there. So these are just some of the, the touches that we're trying to bring to help out um, my fellow productivity geeks uh, get stuff done. Thanks. All right. All right, so tasks, um, we are working on that right now. Um, 
It will probably be available a little bit later on. Um, we're actually working on the fundamental changing the ability to now add all of these different um, uh, you know, capabilities like statuses and kind of bringing it on par with a lot of the uh, workflow management. Um, in a lot of cases, you can call it case management, for example, on your. Uh, so, so you're going to be able to model a lot of different workflows with a new task because of subtasks, the ability to have customizable statuses, customizable uh, ability where you are. All right, so the next thing uh, is packs. Packs, we released packs, and we, we try to um, basically say, okay, how can we take everything that we know and, and um, around marketing, how can we take everything that we, can, we know about best practices in Element and kind of bring those uh, to you with just a click of a button. And that was PAX. That's, that's the vision of PAX. It's always been the vision of PAX. Uh, we released it over a year ago. Uh, a lot of you are using it. We have over 25 packs in uh, currently. Anything, anything from a happy birthday pack where it kind of builds together uh, um, you know, a communication uh, campaign that essentially sends out a happy birthday to every, every student um, on the day of their birthday, kind of designed for that. Two more complex ones, like for example, having a whole landing page with a communication plan um, and an inquiry form that, that captures um, uh, data for that student. Uh, we've added 10 new packs over the past few months. Uh, and a lot of those have to do with very fundamental things, like how do I build a really good email template, right? How do I build a good email template that's for um, you know, sending a survey invite? Or how do I have an event invite template? Or perhaps a nudge template? So we've built a lot of those, and those are available today on PAX. So we're going to continue to actually uh, build more and more components in there, and there's new PAX that are coming up. We have about 10 plus new PAX kind of planned over the next couple of months. Uh, but some of them, just to highlight them, uh, things like the FAFSA reminder campaigns, right? A lot of you have, have asked us, okay, we need to, like, it, it's a workflow that you handle all the time. Well, we want to make it easy and, and, and kind of build it into Element uh, on PAX so it becomes easier for you. Current student campaigns, newsletter templates, right? You're, you're doing all these things and it takes time, right? It takes time to get those things done. Uh, integration packs. So how do we now bring in integrations with other different systems like SCORE or document management or some of the other components? Well, you need to create data, you know, mappings and so on and so forth. And that becomes really easy when we build it for you and then you can just modify it and tweak it for your own if you need to. Um, we want to move beyond just, pro we can't build everything, right? So at the end of the day, um, we're only going to be able to build um, a, certain amount of t a certain amount of packs. Uh, however, the ecosystem needs to become a lot bigger than that. And what we're adding, and what, what our vision is, is that upcoming, um, we want to have PAX Marketplace, where you're going to be able to get uh, PAX not just from Element, but you're able to get premium PAX that perhaps you, uh, you know, we've worked with a partner and now you can buy that you know, through the Element Marketplace. You can buy perhaps services from other partners of ours. You know, you came in here today and you sell, okay, there's Enrollify, there's Spark, there's, there's all this, you know, uh, co-video, like there's all these different partners that we play nicely together with and, and that we want to make sure that, that PAX is a way for you to actually have an easy access to that through the Element Marketplace. And, and further than that is then, you know, we, our, our longer term vision for that is the ability for you to, cre to be able to create and share some of those packs on your own as well. So that's, that's packs. Uh, next thing, Bolt. We talked about, um, obviously, intelligence in Element. We've introduced a lot of really great things around, um, around Bolt. Um, and kind of the insights, right? We call it insights, bold, like a lot of the intelligence and data that's underlying. Um, one of the things mm -hmm. that, that we, we've heard quite a bit is that we work with you guys to work with insights uh, to basically customize a lot of your dashboarding and reporting. However, as we're introducing more of these different modules and introducing more of this kind of, you know, like tasks, for example, or some of the conversations, like we realize that we need to provide a lot more uh, uh, insights and, and dashboards. So we're, we're going to roll out a whole set of new dashboards and insights that are all performance engagement dashboards. Think about you know, task productivity. What we've learned is that you guys are modeling a lot of those workflows around the, the features in Element, and we now need to be able to give you visibility into productivity, performance, how that's working. Uh, so both things like tasks, things like email campaigns, workflows, journeys, like we all need to tie those back to, uh, to insights. And, and those are coming you know, over the next couple of months. Uh, we'll probably release a few more of those as well. 
Now, the, the other part that we, we've heard quite a bit is we, we have made, we thought that Insights was, it, it's an amazing product, it's an amazing uh, kind of offering, right? Something that no one else was doing when we were offering it uh, in the beginning of Element. Uh, it, it has evolved quite a bit. And, you know, we always kind of provided and sold it as, okay, you have to buy Insights in order to, to get all of these, uh, you know, components in. And the reason for that was because we needed to work with you and customize and, and do a lot of that uh, data work. But now, as all of your workflows are in Element, it becomes a lot easier for us to, to build this out of the box, uh, Insights and Dashboards. And one of, the, one of the gates before was that only certain people in your organization can view those. But now we're opening that up so everybody can, you know, it, basically we're making Insights Unlimited viewers so everybody can, can access it. Um, we're making this uh, unlimited and we're actually baking it into uh, any renewals or, or new contracts that we're adding into the platform. So it's actually getting included in the platform. Um, the, the, part, the other part here is that we are also adding the ability, you know, as we provide you more of these standardized data underneath, we're, pro we need, we're giving you the ability to now have your own um, author uh, experience within Elements. So you're gonna be able to um, not just come to us and say, hey, I need to modify this particular uh, visualization, but have the ability for you to do that on your own, right? Uh, we're gonna give you um, what we call our author experience where you can come in and you can kind of modify and, and uh, basically a full BI tool within Element as well. And again, this is, this is an additional uh, component in there, but um, we realize that it's something that, that you know, a lot of your teams have, need to do. The last part that I'm going to talk about is you know, integrations, right? Uh, when we, we talked about connectivity and, and kind of uh, data exchanges and integrations and that's, that's been the hardest thing to overcome as part of why should I get Element, you know, why should I use Element, right? This is the area where we face the most headwind when it comes to adoption on the campus side. And of course, of course, there's a lot of uncertainty. It's like, you guys are not proven. We have no idea who you are. Have you done this thing before? Like, how do you, how's my data gonna come in? How are we gonna integrate? We have relied on partners in the, in the past in order to do some of these integrations, um, but it's been, uh, it's been a little bit, you know, you know, we can't control that whole experience. So moving forward, one of the other things that we, uh, we've done is that data, having the element underlying data, it becomes really easy for, you know, teams to kind of bring that into their own internal, um, into their own internal uh, analytics teams or their internal um, uh, kind of BI team or somebody who's actually doing uh, the reporting, right? So, so institutional research is a big part of that, uh, bringing that data in and seeing underneath what's, what's available. So the, the same data that we're offering in, uh, in Insights and we're building Insights on, we are actually exposing that same data uh, through a new through an offering called Snowflake Data Sharing, and Snowflake Data Sharing is the ability for you to get access to all of the data that's underlying an element, have that be available to you, so you no longer have to actually pull you know pull data for you know for your institutional research or for anybody else, but we can give everything to you. So we have we're giving you the same access that, that we had before. You can use it for whatever you need to use it, but most likely, um, you know, the institutional research teams or your internal uh, uh, BI teams. And the way that that works, it's real-time data that we're providing it for you. There's no copies of it. You don't need a, uh, it's, it's analyst ready. You don't need a Snowflake contract uh, necessary. And then you can just bring your own BI tool. So if you don't like insights and kind of how we're visualizing things, well, you can use Power BI or you can use whatever, you can use Tableau and then you can just connect to, um, you know, to the data share and then you can build your own reports on top of that. So that's kind of the ability for, that, that's kind of our vision is not just provide you and lock you into Element, but be able to share a lot of that, that data exchange. And of course you can use that same data to 
um, you know, to send to, you, to other systems as well, right? Everything can kind of connect to Snowflake nowadays, so you can use that for that as well. So again, this, this, is, um, uh, this is a new offering, and just, just ask one of the CS teams or, or ask us afterwards if you're interested in, in kind of exploring this a little bit more. Uh, we really think this is kind of the future of data sharing, no longer SFTPs or FTPs or any of that flat file stuff. It's all about how do we you know, kind of keep that all in one place. Um, we have, uh, one of the things that we talked about before was that we, we're just an ecosystem, like we want to be uh, part of a larger ecosystem. And as part of this larger ecosystem, there's a lot of tools that have been built to kind of be the piping and connect all the other uh, components or all the other uh, software out there in the world. Uh, one of those is Zapier, and uh, we are, you know, our, our app, we have a Zapier app, and it's publicly uh, available today on, on Zapier. Um, I believe they are, they passed 6,000, or is it 6,000 apps? I believe they recently passed 6,000 apps, so they connect and integrate with 6,000 apps. If you need to know more about uh, the data sharing and Snowflake, uh, Damien's presentation, uh, a little bit later today, he'll touch base on that, on dashboarding and some of the new things that we're doing. If you want to know more about Zapier, we have a presentation tomorrow that actually goes into uh, you know, some detail on how to connect Element to Zapier and do all those things. So real time, instant triggering, uh, we have about seven actions in there, anything from whenever something happens in Element, we can send that data anywhere. Um, you kind of build your own integrations there. Um, the last thing, I, I started talking about this before, but um, I realized that I had the slides a little bit out of order. But one of the things that we want to do is we want to make sure that Element uh, is available, like we're, we're building on top of our own APIs in order for us to learn how other systems are integrating with Element and how you guys are, can access the data, how can you uh, access the system uh, and, and kind of enable that data exchange uh, within Element and make it more open and more connected. So one of the things that we've done is that we, we just released and we have available more documentation and we, we have made available our integration guide and that talks a lot about our APIs, it talks about you know, the different methods that Element can be integrated with other different systems. Uh, we are going to have a session tomorrow afternoon about integrations and, and kind of how that works and we'll touch base on a lot of the components on this integration guide, but it has documentation, it has some sample code in there, uh, it has some template examples, some best practices, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So now when my team says, well, how do you do integrations? I can just send them to a link and then say, okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so it becomes a lot easier for us. Um, the next thing, um, so the other part, you know, we've actually working with a lot of different, uh, we, we needed to become really good at, um, connecting element to the different SIS systems. And our working with some of the partners, the experience, we couldn't control some of the experience. And because the connection to the SIS is so critical to the operation and bringing element live, we have made a con concerted effort to, to take a lot of that back in-house and be able to build capabilities in-house that now we can come in and say, okay, we can integrate with your SIS and we're gonna manage the integration. We're gonna provide you guys with, we're gonna build all of the integration and we're going to um, you know, do it as part of the, the, the implementation, as part of that. So we're bringing a lot of that in house. Uh, we have a lot of integrations that we've done. Um, com, um, I'll talk about Common App in just a second, but uh, we're, we're integrating with the Lucian Ethos and Banner, uh, Colleague and Ethos. Um, uh, as well, uh, we've integrated with Anthology, the Campus Nexus, and Populi SIS. So these are just a few of them, right? But if your SIS has a, an interface, has uh, an API, has something like that, we have the ability to now uh, bring a lot of that in-house and then manage that process. And, and again, we'll talk about some of the integrations, some of these examples tomorrow during the integration session. Uh, the last part, if you're a Common App member, um, some of you might be, some of you might not be, but Common App, uh, we now have the ability to, um, we have a first, uh, we're a partner of Common App now, and for the first year this year, you can ask the Common App to make Element as your uh, desired um, the SDS uh, kind of pr uh, destination. So we'll be able to bring all of that data in, very similar to 
uh, some of the other systems or some of the other processes. So we can then go back and kind of keep, we keep all of that data in for you and you can import only the pieces that you need, but, but we're, we're gonna be able to do that. So, a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> Just, just finish this, uh, I had to put that in. But again, we're, we're trying to make sure that we're, we're listening and kind of what you need and trying to look ahead a little bit and start thinking, okay, what we're gonna need you know, six months from now, a year from now, and a lot of the things that you saw today, um, we are, you know, we're gonna put them out there, we're gonna ask for your feedback, and if we don't get a lot of responses, we might just decide to kill certain things, right? Because they're just not that valuable, and we'll just tackle them next year. So this was just a peek at everything that we are thinking about, and we have either in the roadmap right now or something that we are actually working on uh, coming up.